He's an extraordinary person, it, whatever you know about him. He's been a, uh, I met him as a dancer. I've never seen anyone dance like he could ever in my life. I, I, I was just saying to him upstairs, it was, it was shocking that someone had that talent that he'd seen on film, but he'd never seen in person, you know. Mm. I've never met anyone who is quite so determined to um, be better. I've never uh, met anyone that's so determined to learn and to, and to self-teach, which I think is one of the most inspirational things of all about anybody. What you're going to see tonight is a, it's a film where John's going to, he got fat and then he got fit again. As he put it, it was like Michelangelo looking at a slab of rock and saying, I'll just take the bits that aren't the Statue of David away, which is a kind of a nice way of thinking about it. So please put your hands together for John Riley's shape. Thank you. Man, yeah, stand up, please, man. <laughs> this man just, just out of the blue, just liked what I had to say and liked my films and said, you know, do you want to do something bigger? And I, I'm like, I ain't got no money to do something bigger. I don't have the facilities. And he's like, whatever you need, just go off and do it. And and he's facilitated this journey uh, for me. And this yeah. is your first feature length yeah. film. Yeah. So why did this subject particularly mean so much? I think it's the movement thing is the most interesting thing, right? The, the mix of choreography, and I know you a long time. Yeah. A dancer, a fighter. This whole thing about movement seems to be the most interesting thing. The way you move when you're constantly moving, actually. That's, that's the most interesting thing. Yeah. I mean, I, I came... I was brought up in a house where... Um, my mother couldn't stand a lot of distraction or or uh, normal childish behavior she she wanted everything to be quiet and still and um i couldn't so in order for her with her condition to feel more relaxed it was to constrict me and she did that with a lot of cruelty and stuff but that was just like putting uh, a cork in a, in, a, in a kettle type of thing. So it just exploded out in, in other ways, you know what I mean? And I found that when I when I do sit still, uh, there's just a, 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 a swell up. Do you know what I mean? It has, to, it has to come out. But knowing you like I do this, um, you had a difficult childhood, if you don't mind me saying, and a difficult teenage years and everything else and, and and it strikes me knowing you like i do that movement is about not just going towards something it's about getting away from something too you know it's, it's about constant yeah, but engaging as well yeah of because course. because when i moved you know i was born in the 60s i was born in 64 and just walking around and not being from these racist backgrounds, everything about you was wrong. But when I moved, everything about me was right. Do you know what I mean? And it didn't matter how much I was afraid of people, when I moved, people stood still and started to smile. And I had a whole different interaction with, with people once I moved, they became safe. Dancing surely must have been the first indication, you know, Watching, we talked about this, Michael or Fred Astaire or Jim sure. Kelly or that kind of floating above the world and and uh, beyond. You know what I mean? That yeah. you've always been that ever since I've known you. Someone that's just it was my sister actually that encouraged that in me. You know because um, she saw that I would as soon as Gene Kelly came out, I didn't like I don't like Fred Astaire, but Gene Kelly. He's a good dancer, man. I don't know. I don't know. I don't, know, I don't, I don't <laughs> Gene Kelly. <laughs> But uh, as soon as Gene Kelly came on the screen, I just froze until it finished. And then my sister introduced me to these records, you know, the, like these, these disco records and these, these rhythms. And then I saw the dancers, I saw the way she danced. And that was it. You know, I mean, I was just constantly practicing every in the toilet, in the bedroom, in the hallway, wherever, you know. I was constantly called by my mother when I was sent to brush my teeth because it took too long. And then, you know, I never really brushed my teeth. I was just dancing in, in that time I brushed my teeth before. You could brush your teeth while dancing, yeah. surely. Yeah. Yeah. 
And so, uh, yeah, I guess, I guess watching this film, I know you so well, and there is a beautiful escapism somehow, isn't there, about your own body, because it's about the only thing you can control. I mean, I suppose I'm thinking in negative ways, like anorexia, in some would say positive ways, like bodybuilding, a, a lot of that comes from how you feel as a child, you know? You know, people build their bodies up in order to protect themselves, or they starve themselves in order to control themselves. Yeah. You know, was that a part of it too? To have some control over your own destiny, if you like? Um, it wasn't, it was, it's not thought about. I mean, other people can analyse it from the outside, but it was just a natural thing. To, being still is unnatural. You know, when water is still, it's rotten. You know what I mean? And what purifies our body is water. And if you keep that water moving, the lymphatic system doesn't have a pump. You need to move in order for it to work to take the trash out. So it was an in instinct within myself to cleanse, to keep the ligaments loose. Because when your life is constantly threatened, then you become obsessed with quality of life and vibrancy of life. Do you know what I mean? So if I take, take the stiffness away and free myself up, I don't escape, I actually connect more. And, and, and is there, there's a link, isn't there, between uh, being physically fit and being able to protect yourself? I suppose that's what I'm getting through too, because you... In the early days it was about that, because yeah. I was threatened a lot. And then I put on this war paint, and now nobody wants to threaten me. <laughs> I <laughs> certainly <laughs> don't. So, so now it's just about moving, okay. you know what I mean, and, and finding out. I mean, Edel Portal that you saw in the film, he said something... Um, that struck me and he said strength is not about lifting weight he said that you know that actually deconstructs the body and and ruins its function he says strength has been able to dislocate and put it back without injury mm. that is real strength a lot of people are calcified you know like if I'm walking on the street people want to walk in straight lines because just to move to the left and dodge each other is an effort and they're so uh, uh, fatigued and you know we live in a stimulus ba stimulant based society yeah you get you get uh, stimulated by coffee and sugar and all these things but the downside of it is your actual adrenal glands get shot so now you're in this vicious circle of constantly trying to use something externally to get you out of bed in the morning you know what i mean whereas if you didn't eat you'll get rid of all the mucus from the body that's the barrier between you and your nutrition because you pay in you're kind of making a bad deal with pleasures, right? With sugar, with alcohol, and all these type of things. The tissue will die if it goes straight to it. So what you do, you make, you make a trade-off. You say, okay, for me to indulge in my pleasures, I'll live with mucus, the barrier to my flesh. And I'll get up in the morning and cough up this green stuff. And I'll calcify and all of that, just so it doesn't get into my flesh and kill me too early, right? Whereas I go the opposite way, where I take all the mucus out of the body by fasting, right? I clean the colon, so every little bit of food I eat, it goes straight into the tissue and I'm highly energised. And from my addictions before, if I put matcha tea, a little bit of bee pollen, and coconut oil, I swear it's exactly the same as taking a line of Charlie. <laughs> I'll try that. <laughs> I, you, I think also but you can't. You know, you can't just try that. You got to get rid of all the barriers first, and then it will hit you like that. You take the bee pollen with it, Charlie. <laughs> yeah. I think. I, I, think it, I think there's also, isn't there? This, this. Uh, you, you've, you've, and I mean this in the most respectful way. You're replacing one set of behaviours with another set of behaviours, trying to give yourself the same sense of. Uh, most of us uh, were. I'm sure. I'm right in saying. In, in jobs that don't really uh, suit what our bodies were meant for, right? Most of us sit down in front of a computer, most of us sit, you know, the very few. It, it, you, people, cynics in the audience might say, well, it's all right for you, you make a living from fighting and dancing, and it, of course, if you're a dancer, if you're fighting, you have to keep fit, and it's fine. But most people, most of us here, have to sit down in front of a computer screen, and time is tight, and the kids need feeding, and the rent needs paying, and you've got to do your stuff. It's very hard to, to, to try and combine what you're saying with, with a normal, a normal in inverted commas, modern day lifestyle. It's not hard at all. 
<laughs> it's not hard at all. You can you can pick up your kid and be mindless about it and want to be somewhere else and want to watch the telly, or you can crouch down in the right position and pick your child up and be mindful about everything that you're doing and it becomes yoga, it becomes Tai Chi. Or you can put the child to bed and watch the television. You can do all I, that. Think, I think that's the problem, isn't yeah. it? Because most of you feel tired. It's about the mindfulness of, of, of it. Do you know what I mean? And it's like, again, I'm not trying to. I'm not trying to replace one thing with another. I'm going back to what I was doing when I was born. I wasn't trying to replace anything or find something when I was born. I moved all the time. I'm just going back. I was taken away from that by an industrial-based society that says go to work and make me rich. And then they constricted my life, you know what I mean? With those ideas. And I've gone right back to what I did when I was a little boy, which is move all the time. See a tree, I don't just look at it and go, oh, nice, I climb in it. Uh, one of the most interesting bits for me, and I've seen you do this, um, in fact, John and, and Karan, one of his kids stayed at our place a few weeks ago. And the first thing, the first thing he said to me, one, like the house, blah, 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 or, you know, we're having a great time. It's like, you got wooden floors. you got wooden floors. I can move in here, man. Yeah. And then we came back, him and Karan, are, 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 are skinning along the floors and using the wooden floors yeah. in order to get better movement, which I thought is remarkable and pretty beautiful. Yeah. Your body, like I said, the lymphatic system is the most important system in the body. If you don't take the trash out, Everything you eat is contaminated. Everything. The, if the waters in your body are contaminated, doesn't matter what you put in, it will be just another poison adding to the rest of the poisons. You have to move. I don't care what, how you choose to move. I chose these dynamic forms because they're more entertaining than me just boxing and punching a boxing bag or like for an hour. So you're trying to keep yourself interested too. Because one of them are my favourite bits. I'm not trying anymore. It's like when you're yeah. when you're on the floor crawling like an insect or an amphibian yeah. with that guy, that white guy. That that is one of my favourite things. When when you're trying to almost replicate animalistic types of movements with hips that come up too high and, yeah. and the, you know that that stuff seems to be like you're pushing your body to things that it used to do and it doesn't need to do anymore. Yeah, I mean the thing is. I know that, that also freaking out families in airports. I didn't like that too. <laughs> I'm just trying to normal. I, the, the, me doing it in public spaces is like graffiti. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'm just using my body, and, and I'm trying to bring it back to people again that moving is normal. It's like when I he when like the questions how you're asking me the, the question you're saying or you're saying that um, you're trying to do something. I'm not trying to do anything. I'm doing what I normally do. When I was trying, is when I stopped doing all of that. Do you know what I mean? You know, sitting still is... I'm not the bad guy here, it's not broad. <laughs> <laughs> I'm saying is... I'm just doing my best. Sitting, sitting still is effort, that's when I have to try. Yeah. You know what I mean? When I, when I have to sit at the computer, that's an effort, that's a try. My body is going... And I have to move a little bit. You know, this. if I stay still, my back's going to hurt. Do you know what I mean? So... I'm not trying to escape anything. I'm not trying to do something. I'm not trying to do something new. I'm trying to do what I was created for. Yeah. Every, That's every, what I'm getting. Every, every atom in my body is now vibrating and doing a form of yoga. Every single molecule in my body, everything in my body is bouncing off each other like that, doing its carters. Uh, That's what I was kind of saying is our bodies. Cool. We're designed to move. Yeah. Unfortunately, society has come uh, to a point where we don't need to move sure. because other things move for us, whether they're cars or bicycles, or, or, or we don't move at all. Yeah. So you're trying to... I mean, th the bigger point, I suppose, going back again, is is the need to do this. I think that's a, that's more about the, 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 the mind than it is about the body. You, you know, the, your body might cry out for it, but it's the brain that's got to say, yes, I want to do it, and I... Yeah. Uh, that process of getting the brain to start loving it yes. is tough. Like, But you've always had that. I mean, when I met you, I mean, I remember one of the things when you used to do your lock-in and that when you were like 18 in Leicester Square, you know, all this shit. And I always remember that every time you got up, you used to put one hand down and sweep one leg. Right? I always right, remember yeah, that yeah, about yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I still saw it Finish in the nice, film, yeah. like your little signature move. 
And I always remember that you didn't get up. Ooh, you got up in one finish well, movement. yeah. Every finish time, nice. yeah. yeah. We finished nice, John. Yeah, finish nice. <laughs> finish nice. But the the thing is that, like, I'm having a dilemma at the moment because the older people, like my age group and whatever, it's really depressing for me when I deal with them because they will um, romanticise away their death, right? Because because they're so shocked. And I'm going to go move, and, and like, but that hurts. And I'm, a lot of the time I, I have to go, oh, then I have to leave you then. And I'm like, if I leave them, who, is somebody else going to come along? Because the youth, the kids, there was this lady that, that I, was, I was trying to get an interview with, I can't find her, and she wrote this thing about weathering, right? And she said that in America they think that all the little girls are getting pregnant early by mistake or making mistakes and she said that's a, they're making choices they're like they're 13 14 i want to have a kid now and then she this thing hit me hard she said because they already calculated that people of 25 and 26 are already shot so they're saying if i have a baby at 25 and 26 i won't have the energy to bring it up so it's logical for me to have a baby from 12 and 13. They're making choices. So she said that these kids are terrified at becoming their parents' age. So then they're like, they're making choices where they end their lives early. Because they're hearing their parents, you know, I get up like this and sit down like that. See, in a straight line, there's no noise. But most people around me get up like this. <coughs> And there's a strange grunting noise before they get, just to get out of a chair. And when you sit down too. Right. So, and you, you think about, about, you know, how people, and p these people's pleasures they're putting in their mouth, and it's what they're putting in their mouth is causing the acidity in the body, that's calculating the, cal calcifying the joints, but it's their pleasure. And I'm going, you're literally going to seize up, have no quality of life left, terrify the children, right? And, all they, <laughs> and then where are they going to go? Then what happened was, I do all of these movements, and I do them, I don't go to gyms, I, you know, I'll, I'll go to a gym now and again, but really I try to get around the public to let them see it's normal to move. And I'll train in like a, like a, like a, one of those f fake grass football pitches. All the kids playing football, I'll start moving, football stops, boys sit down. Then one boy, walks over and says, can I wrestle with you? Right? And then the next day, cut a long story short, there's a knock on the door, and there's five boys. And then there's six boys. And then there's 20 boys. And I'm running with all these teenagers. And I've got all these BMXs that I make. And then each one can have a BMX, and we all go riding. And I'm older than their, their fathers. But they, wouldn't, they don't even interact with their dads. Mm. But because I'm moving with this vitality, yeah. they're interacting. Then the weekend came, and their programming weekend don't do anything, so they didn't do anything. And then there was these infants, like little kids, probably the tallest one was about this tall, about five or six of them, and I'm doing my little drills, and then they come along and they're doing the drills. Now I've got little babies <laughs> training, training with me because of, the, because of the movement. So I'm like, if I could teach them to constantly keep moving. If I could teach them how you eat and not what to eat, how how to give the body a rest from eating, like the fasting, okay? Because these organs are like, an, like a, a, a car engine that you constantly, you've got your foot down and the engine on constantly. And then you wonder why all of a sudden you're storing fat because you can't digest anything anymore. Your arms are skinny, your legs are skinny, but the middle's fat. Skinny fat is a new thing. That's because all the vital organs have got fat all around them. You, you know, you're pathological at this point. Do you know what I mean? And once you start fasting and you rest these organs, you don't need stimulants anymore because for the first time once they've been rested, they react immediately in a healthy manner to the food that you were eating where you weren't getting any buzz off of. So if you can teach a child how to fast and stuff like that, along with the movement, 
Then the behavior changes. It changed my, my behavior because it, you, now you have value for life. The brain is stimulated, dopamine, serotonin, no cortisol, no fight or flee chemicals going on in the body. So they can react to stress and stressful situations in a lot more um, less violent manner. You know what I mean, so, well, this, so, so this whole thing is a lot more deeper. Well, exactly what you say yeah. about manner, because, you know, I know you've had, since I've known you, you've had a, 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 a violent teenage years sure. and, and youth, and, and uh, you've been in and out of prison and had trouble and, and the rest of it. But how clever, I suppose. Just, you just remind me of something Lulu said to me once when we were training together. Yes. It's like a great description. He says, spiteful little fucker. <laughs> that was like my whole attack, that that whole tenacity is that that's the echoes of but what to I was put like that was youth, into yeah. this seems to me a very clever and wise thing to do. Sure. Because otherwise it's going to end your life. If yeah. you're constantly getting into fights, someone's going to come along and. Oh, that happened already. No, I know it did. You know, and so in, in in order to say I've got this energy anyway, this isn't the right place to put it. Fighting. Yeah. Because it will kill me or kill someone else. Yeah put it into this which is completely one harmless and self-improved you have to remember when a kid goes into combat especially a, a kid that hasn't been given any identity any attention the parents are not there to build the person's yeah. uh, uh, sense of self getting into a violent situation or a dangerous situation you can get an amplified example of who you are if you survive that like my sister said one uh, one time, I got stabbed multiple times. I had a punctured lung, and um, I think my mother was at the end of the bed, and I opened my eyes. She told, "Thank God." And my sister, I think I remember you. She said to my mum, "You know, I mean, forget all that. Now he, he thinks he's going to be Superman." Yeah. Because you because and I did become worse because, you survived because I survived it. it. Yeah. yeah. So there's with this whole violent thing, you know, on on the on the face of it. We go like that, but you have to look at the what. It's like I, I had a piece of code that said, "Violent people are poets in motion." You read the poetry. The kid is t the kid is telling you something. This is where I where I'm on an express kind of outlet to find out every aspect of who I am, how tough I am, how smart I am, how fast I am. In ex extreme situations, you find a better way to express it. Um, hopefully. Well, of course, just looking at the film, yeah. of course, you're not being stabbed here in this. Yeah, yeah, I know, but, but this is, see, I didn't do this, I'm not doing this for me. I'm doing this for the kids. And, and also you've chosen to live in a very small town yeah. in the south of Holland, yeah. where they're not really used to people like you. Sure. You know, what made you choose that arse of nowhere? Um, a green, kids seeing green is amazing for their brain you know what i mean the oxygen the wildlife you know what i mean you know what i mean uh, the cows the slower people you know what i mean you don't so, like cows you're afraid of cows i love cows <laughs> but uh uh it's just it's just great for the kids minds rather than concrete abrupt staccato voices and and the constant you thought london was too much it's too it. much it's too much imposing of will here you know what i mean I'm tougher than you. Uh, I'm not vulnerable. You know all of that, and even even a kid that's never even been faced with any danger before will go. Is there danger? Just being well, around. They react the to the environment. They react to the environment entirely yeah. in a suitable way, won't they? They're and I feel guilty about where I live too, in a way, because it's like, how can I talk now? You know what I mean? Why? Why do you mean? Well, you know, I'm privileged. But you've made that choice. Yeah. You know but, that then, but, then I, but then I've left all these kids behind that I relate to. So I'm saying, my kid, I have a funny feeling about it. Do you know oh, we I mean? can sing We Are the World later. Yeah. Uh, oh, should we ask some. Cool. Should we ask some questions from the audience, actually? Does anybody have uh, any questions to ask? Yes, sir. Uh, I tried. Okay. Couldn't get his knee above his gut. Okay, Margaret, you've gone from being fit, you started eating bad food. Yeah. But you were training in the same way? No, that way it's gone. It's impossible to train on that, that stuff. 
it's Im impossible. And and one of the, the most, it wasn't just the physicality, it was like the amount of quit in the brain. You know what I mean? Because it was like when your nervous system is, che is checking the petrol tank and going, you want to do what? <laughs> The food, yeah, is t the food is telling talking, you no. Talking to you, of course it is, it's telling you no. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? It's like, you know, your indulgences, when you get up in the morning, you know, like, you know, when you're all charged up on whatever sugar, whatever it is you've got in your body the night before, you've got all these ideas. And you, you know, when I used to drink, you're standing at the bar promising everybody everything until the next morning. And if that person was sober, they're going to call you up and go, remember we said that? Joyful oh, nights bring yeah, sorrowful yeah, mornings. I'm telling you, man. Yeah. You know, I mean, but the thing is, is that most most of the time, even without any alcohol and whatever, the way we eat today, even even if you're going to eat well, it's the order you eat it in. Is as bad as eating junk food. For instance, if you eat fruit after eating meat, it's terrible for the body because now the fruit is going because it goes bad fast. It oxidizes fast. Now it's sitting on top of your meat, oxidizing and making the meat rotten inside your body so you should really eat pineapple first because it's a prebiotic making the, the, the uh, bacteria in the stomach live and that will help digest the meat and you won't have so much in, indigestion but it's about the order that you eat it in i believe people shouldn't eat breakfast at all you should only start eating from about three four o'clock and re optimally you, i think you should only eat one meal a day within a two-hour window it was but great that, fun having John yeah. staying, as you can imagine, <laughs> during Ramadan. I remember, to, to I, remember, I remember sitting at the table with him, right? And he just, he just, he was just eating a piece of melon, and then he went and drank, drank tea on, like a hot drink, on the melon. And I went, "What are you doing?" He goes, "I don't start." <laughs> I should have that printed on a T-shirt when John drank. But I found e eating, eating once a day, I'm still going through the transitions. But I, I used to follow the whole thing when you're training before, you eat six times a day. But it, what you're actually wearing your body out because you're constantly digesting. Now you can't get the nutrients into the ligaments. And I was have, started having joint pains and all of this type of thing. Since I went to one meal a day, I don't have any joint pains at all because my testosterone level goes up because I'm threatening the body. So my testosterone level goes up, my growth hormone level goes up, so the healing process in my body and recovery process in my body is like somebody who's taking steroids. But I do it the hard way. The easy way, they just inject it in their ass. But I'm, you know, I'm, I'm forcing my body to produce those chemicals by bringing it right to the line of starvation. Yeah, yeah but also I guess, it's not contradictory at all, which your film, your evening, but it's, it strikes me too that you, if, if you're an addict sometimes, if you've had problems, if, you, if you've had behavioural problems, etc., you have to find a pretty powerful thing to replace those behaviours. Otherwise, you'll never, you can't just go, I'm going to stop. You need to replace the bad behaviour with good behaviour, sure. which is what you're yeah, doing. Yeah, the replacement is the, is you the cannot just thing. stop the bad behaviour, you've got to replace it with good behaviour. Yeah, I mean, you know, if if it's, it's like if your if your if your whole diet was was junk food and you don't want to eat junk anymore, what else are you going to eat? Yeah, you're going to eat. You're going to eat. You're going to eat the opposite of junk food. But then you you know it just depends on on the levels. I'm at, I'm constantly striving for these higher levels because I'm getting my whole outlook on life now is life preservation. Before it was about just I was angry at everybody that allowed me to get abused and that was everybody on the planet nobody yeah. helped me right so I didn't trust human beings anymore right so my whole thing was make my body a weapon and as soon as anybody behaves like the people that I don't like crush them immediately on behalf of all the other abused kids because I found an abuser that's a lot to take on yeah and I've been doing that all my life and um but now I'm like while I was beating up all the abusers all the abused had no helper. They had no advisor. I was neglecting them. Do you know what I mean? So now I'm just like, leave the abusive people over there and let the police take care of them. Yeah. And I'll deal with um I'll try and deal with the kids and try to stop another kid you do making mistakes of going into being an abuser themselves. Do you know what I mean? 
Uh, does anybody else have any questions they'd like to ask John about the film? Over there, sir. John, if you remember a few years ago, you did a black and white film where you had to raise £10,000 <laughs> for... Uh, in um, Bangladesh. India, yeah, you had yeah. to raise ten thousand pounds. Some of that footage and some of that stuff you had there, if you'd have just slipped two, maybe three or four minutes of that in there, yeah. it would have. It was perfect film. Don't get me wrong. Yeah, I enjoyed every second of it, but I kept begging <laughs> to see <laughs> just some Bits of, of that. The past, yeah, yeah, man, that yeah. would have. I think as a creative, because I watch my work all the time. Mm then you just you want something fresh to entertain yourself too. Do you know what I mean? Right. You know? And I think too, as a writer myself, you need to keep focus in each film or each piece. And I yeah. think, I'm not to disagree with you, I've seen mm. some of his amazing stuff, of course. And that's another film, right? You know, there'll be a next film after this one, and a next film. So I'm just making way, uh, oh yeah, by the way, if you think that I'm not in that shape, I'm still... Oh, uh, you want to be getting... <laughs> And the pants are coming still, down. Go on, Sean, have the leg. Want to see the leg? Yeah, go on. No, 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 no. Sit down, Magic Mike. <laughs> uh, has anyone else got anything to ask? Oh, over here, sir. Yeah, John. Yeah. Um, for the period of time I've known you, um, like, for instance, the film we just watched, obviously I'm touched by it, moved by a lot of things. Um, do you research any of the... And it sounds like a, a, when I hear you speak, it's like a scholar who's... Do you read up on, do you research them? Do, how, do you just experiment on? on yeah, a lot of it, them? yeah, a lot of it is, is, I don't know what it is in me. I, I like, I like to call myself a time traveler. Mm -hmm. Like I've got this naughty kid from my past that I have to consult on a regular basis when I'm doing ideas and saying, do you find this fun? <laughs> and he's like, yeah. And then so he, that's the drive, right? And then there's the future person that I'm trying to be. Right, and then I try to look for stuff that will help me on the path to that better, better person. And it, these things just keep coming my way. No, well, I'm, I hear that. What I'm yeah. trying to get at, you sound like an Oxford educated man, yeah. right? And the, all the words, all the right terminologies that you use. What, do you research this? I mean, internet, um, it, Google. I, <laughs> yeah, you still have to no, uh, can I just say one thing ab about John? Is one of the most I said this at the beginning is he is uh, one of the very few people that has taught himself. He's had absolutely no formal education to speak of. He's been in out of institutions that's what, that's his whole life. The, to me, is the great the, the only thing that's probably likely to make me cry when I think about you is some kid that never had any opportunity, never had any faith. Uh, adults never had any faith in you. And you've learned it by yourself. You've learned. You'll say to me, "Dave, what's this? Word? What, what's that memory? What does facetious mean?" And I'll tell you, yeah, you serendipity. Yeah. Yeah. So you know, and I, I find that the most touching and admirable quality in any human being, man. You what? You recognise your own lack of knowledge, and you learn about it. You don't let anybody tell you you don't know about it because you read about it, and you can repeat it. And I find that so inspiring. Yeah. I really do. I mean, I don't, I don't know where the fight comes from. They, they try to beat it out of me, but the fight is always there that I deserve a life. You know what I mean? Mm. And uh, and I um, and it's not like just for me. I've got to do that for the kids watching me. You know what I mean? No matter what, you deserve a life. Don't quit. Do you know what I mean? Doesn't matter. You know. That's why I just found out recently the reason why you can't judge somebody because the next moment they could be on the path to being completely different, moment by moment. Do you know what I mean? So it's like I all I want to put out there, like the, my my friend Kevin, we're brothers on one aspect, no quitting. I don't care if you chop my leg off, I'm gonna keep moving forward because I might die in the process, but a kid needs to see that spirit in human beings. Because I was constantly, I'm constantly, you don't know how it messes up. Like there, there was a free seat. Was it that that seat next to you was free? That seat is for Dylan who this film was in memory uh, of, because he killed himself, a young man, right? And he would have been here, in front row. So, because of his death, I decided that the only thing I can do out of respect for him is live my life as vibrantly and as fully as possible and do the things that he liked about me, which was to keep doing my art, the poetry, and all the artistic stuff. 
And when kids see life, like when I'm training and stuff like that, they gravitate to it. But when you're moaning because of your disabilities, because of your, your, your habits and your choice, and you're, you're short with them and all this, they're going to look for another parent. And that's when the manipulators step in. Do you know what I mean? And you, you, you make a gap for these people that will scoop your children up and destroy them forever. So we have to be more vibrant than the, you know, the, the drug kingpin on the street or the pimp or whatever. We have to be more vibrant than them. One of the tragedies, I think, too, of modern life, and this is me pontificating, is that not enough men go into primary school care and, and secondary school care because they get a, a, a terrible time and they're the, and very often the kids don't have a male role model at home. Oh. They don't have, I, I, I think primary school teachers something like 94% female in this country. Nothing wrong with that. But you know, those kids do need male role models. They do need, especially if they haven't got those males at home, you know, and they do need people like you to, to motivate them, particularly through this kind of physical movement and nutrition and because mm. it's exciting to them right it's not math it's not biology it's skateboarding and running about they're open jumping for it off. they're open for it of course you know what I mean? but it's like well you know we don't what do we do leave our kids to be pushing weights for the rest of their life which is a body deconstruction you know what i mean it's a terrible thing to do to the body even if a fighter starts put, put, putting weight training in his training I was explaining this to a fighter the other day. I was saying, why when you've got a sport that you have to strike outwards and not give any trace that you're going to strike? Are you doing something and creating a muscle memory where you have to pull back? Which gives the other person all the information about that you're about to strike them and they're going to counter you. So, and the, the, all the movements and weight training go like this. You're not working any, any of the other parts. So as soon as your arm goes like that, the muscle goes. Because that muscle, and all the time you've been getting these great big pecs and stuff, there's all smaller muscles that haven't even been treated at all. Mm. Right? So now you've got a bigger, stronger body, and you move it in the wrong manner, those tendons just tear. Mm. Because they've never been engaged. Mm. But when you're constantly seeking new movement, like what I call being a generalist. Because when you're a specialist, you're stupid at everything else. <laughs> right? When you're a generalist, you're kind of smart at everything. A little bit. <laughs> You know what I mean? So, and the body is general. It moves in all different facets. You know what I mean? It's not just the physicality. You have to then respect what enables the body to move, which is nothing inside it. If I go running after a dinner, I'm going to get sick. Right? If I run on an empty stomach, it's a joy. And you're going to enjoy your dinner. For sure. Has anyone else got any more questions? Lady at the back. Yeah, I just wanted to ask um, something with regards to movement and injury. I just wanted to ask if you've had sort of any injuries that have maybe sort of changed the way that you've been able to move and how you've dealt with those, or if you haven't, how have you avoided them? I had, I had, I had injuries when I, when I messed around with weight mm. all the time, even just putting a weight down and pulled my, pulled my muscle pulled in my neck and I was like this. Yeah. Just putting, the, just if you disengage and just put the thing down, you can pull a muscle. Um, but since I started doing this stuff, absolutely nothing at all. You can see the fluidity, I think, in that movement. I think that's what's kind of, I think it probably um, brings something almost primeval out in human beings because you can see, oh, that's the way. That's why our hips are made like this. That's yeah. why our knees are made like this. Yeah, yeah. Why, why, but of course, we don't use those movements because there's no need to. Because we've got other things to do for us. Yeah. And when you're moving like that, it's a bigger x-ray. Like, for instance, when I do the lizard crawl, I think it's it's uh, the right leg, it sweeps the floor and then curls around. Mm -hmm. But the left one goes straight up. So I can see, okay, I need to work on flexibility on that side. When you're doing these movements, you get to see wh when there's an imbalance. Do you know what I mean? So it's, a, it's constantly progressing. If I made a film today, I'd be like 10 times better than that. Because I'm constantly viewing it, improving it, viewing it, improving it, adding more sequences. You know what I mean? Like, now I'm faster now than what I was then. You know what I mean? I will be faster next month than I am now. Because I'm going to constantly make adjustments in my diet and in my movement to keep... I don't know where the ceiling's going to be. How fast can you get, John? Yeah. Uh, okay, D does anybody have any more questions? Sir? Uh, first of all, thank you very much. 
Bless. inspired me today. Bless. And um, the guy who financed it, what's his name? Mike. Mike, thank you. Really, really thank you. Um, I wanted to just add, yeah, thank you. <laughs> I wanted to add, um, you may say it already, you might say it afterwards, but no matter how much research you do, if you don't take action, you're not going to learn anything. Mm -hmm. And that's what he's done throughout his whole life. He's taken action, and as a result, he's learned, and that's why he can talk in this manner. And that's it. Awesome. That's a nice comment to finish on, I think. I'm sure if you want to chat to John afterwards or whatever, but let's... Uh, I'm very proud of my friend, and I think everybody here is extraordinarily impressed. Uh, let's hear it one more time for John Riley. <laughs> All day. Curses and slurs. We're famous for the veins that I touch. I'm on a verge. Maybe I came to play a quick game and then dust. I'll handle any man, I'm an animal, bruh. From birth I was hurt with the hurt that had spent. First of all, I would, I would like to say thank you very much to, to John. Um, this movie really moved me, and uh, I was not expecting to uh, to watch something like this. It's beautiful, it's artistic. Um, it also uh, reminds us how we need to treat our body, ourselves, our mind, especially the mind, I would say. And um, it shows again that nothing is impossible if you put your mind into it.